Om Brahmana Hutam Brahmagna Brahmana Hutam Brahmaiva Tena Gontavyam Brahmaiva Tena Gantavyam Brahmaiva Tena Gantavyam Brahmaiva Gantavyam Brahma Karma Samadhina Brahma Karma Samadhina Brahma Karma Samadhina Brahma Karma Samadhina Brahmarpanam Brahmahavi Brahmarpanam Brahmahavi Brahmagno Brahmanahutam Brahmagno Brahmanahutam Brahmaiva Tena Gantavyam Brahmaiva Tena Gantavyam Brahma Karma Samadhana Brahma Karma Samadhana Brahmarpanam Brahmahavi Brahmarpanam Brahmahavi Brahmagnao Brahmanahutam Brahmagnao Brahmanahutam Brahmaiva Tena Gantavyam Brahmaiva Tena Gantavyam Brahma Karma Samadhana Brahma Karma Samadhana Brahmarpanam Brahmahavi Brahmarpanam Brahmahavi Brahmagnao Brahmanahutam Brahmagnao Brahmanahutam Brahmaiva Tena Gantavyam Brahmaiva Tena Gantavyam Brahma Karma Samadhina Brahma Karma Samadhina Brahmarpanam Brahmahavir Brahmarpanam Brahmahavir Brahmagnao Brahmanahutam Brahmagnao Brahmanahutam Brahmaiva Tena Gantavyam Brahmaiva Tena Gantavyam Brahma Karma Samadhina Brahma Karma Samadhina Mariti, would you like to read Sanskrit? Brahmarpanam Brahmahavir Brahmagnam Brahmana Hutam Brahmagnam Brahmana Hutam Brahmaiva Tena Ganatavyam Brahmaiva Tena Ganatavyam Brahma Karma Samadhina Brahma Karma Samadhina Yes, very good. Brahma, Brahma spiritual in nature. Spiritual in nature. Arpanam, Arpanam contribution. Contribution. Brahma, Brahma, the supreme. The supreme. Have, Have butter. butter. Brahma, Brahma, spiritual. Spiritual. Agnau, in the fire of. Consummation. In the fire of consummation. Brahmana. Brahmana. By the spirit soul. By the spirit soul. Hutam. Hutam. Offered. Offered. Brahma. Brahma. Spiritual kingdom. Spiritual kingdom. Eva. Eva. Certainly. Certainly. Tena. Tena. By him. Gantavyam, Gantavyam to, be reached. to be reached Brahma, Brahma spiritual, spiritual Karma, Karma in activities, in activities. Samadhina, Samadhina by complete absorption, by complete absorption. Translation A person who is fully who is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness is sure to attain the spiritual kingdom because of his full contribution to spiritual activities in which the consummation is absolute and that which is offered is of the same spiritual nature. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. 
how activities in Krishna consciousness can lead one ultimately to the spiritual goal is described here. There are various activities in Krishna consciousness and all of them will be described in the following verses. But for the present just the principle of Krishna consciousness is described. A conditioned soul entangled in material contamination is sure to act in, in the material atmosphere and yet he has to get out of such an environment. The process by which the conditioned soul can get out of the material atmosphere is Krishna consciousness. For example, a patient who is suffering from a disorder of the bowels due to overindulgence in milk products is cured by another milk product, namely curds. The materially absorbed conditioned soul can be cured by Krishna consciousness as set forth here in the Gita. This process is generally known as yagna or activities or sacrifices simply meant for the satisfaction of Vishnu or Krishna. The more the activities of the material world are performed in Krishna consciousness or for Vishnu only, the more the atmosphere becomes spiritualized by complete absorption. The word Brahma or Brahman means spiritual. The Lord is spiritual and the rays of his transcendental body are called Brahma Jyoti his spiritual effulgence. Everything that exists is situated in that Brahma Jyoti. But when the Jyoti is covered by illusion, Maya or sense gratification, it is called material. This material veil can be removed at, uh, at once by Krishna consciousness. Thus, the offering for the sake of Krishna consciousness, the consuming agent of such an offering or contribution, the process of consumption, the contributor and the result are all combined together Brahman or the absolute truth. The absolute truth covered by Maya is called matter. Matter dovetailed for the cause of the absolute truth regains its spiritual quality. Krishna consciousness is the process of converting the illusory consciousness into Brahman or the Supreme. When the mind is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness, it is said to be in Samadhi or trance. Anything done in such transcendental consciousness is called Yagna or sacrifice for the Absolute. In that condition of spiritual consciousness, 
the contributor, the contribution, the consumption, the performer or leader of the performance and the result or ultimate gain, everything becomes one in the Absolute, the Supreme Brahman. That is the method of Krishna Consciousness. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanye Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yata Parakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakani Tamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishapanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Nama Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhaktivedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Sanyavadi Prasyatya Desatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Kadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare So Lord Krishna is describing to Arjuna the process of sacrifice or yagna. Yagna. We say yagna vai Vishnu. Sacrifice is meant for the pleasure of Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu is also Lord Krishna. When we say Vishnu it's not different from Krishna. Vishnu is the forearm form, Lord Krishna has the two-arm form. But actually there's no, not much difference between the two. They are both the Supreme Lord. So Lord Krishna is there at Kurukshetra speaking the Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna. And he wants Arjuna to understand how if he will do everything as a yagna, as a sacrifice, then it is spiritual. It does not bind one to the material world. Whatever we do which is not done for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord, then that binds us to the material world. We get reactions, we become entangled in the material energy. There are two natures. There is the spiritual nature and there is the material nature. The material nature 
is temporary, full of misery and ignorance. But the spiritual nature is Sat Chit Ananda. It is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. We have to learn how we can reach to the spiritual nature. Because we, we have forgotten our spiritual identity, we are in this material world and we are covered by ignorance, maya. So, you have to, we have to understand there are two kinds of souls. There is the liberated soul and there is the conditioned soul. Conditioned souls are in the material world and they are thinking they are the body and they are trying to enjoy the body and they are never happy, never satisfied because that is the nature of material pleasure that it never gives us the real happiness which we want. But if we experience spiritual pleasure that is of a different nature. Spiritual pleasure means the pleasure which we get when we act for the service of the Supreme Lord. When we act as a sacrifice, yagna, for the pleasure of Lord Vishnu, then we can experience real pleasure. We can experience purification. And by purifying ourselves, we can awaken spiritual pleasure. The pleasure of the material world is very short and flickering. We are trying to enjoy in the material world, but it's very difficult to enjoy here in this world. We are trying, we're working. Some of you are working very hard and you're working many hours trying to make money, trying to enjoy, trying to get some happiness. But we often end up disappointed. We end up miserable and suffering. This body is meant to suffer. It's very difficult to give pleasure to the body, but it's very easy to suffer. The body, any part of the body can feel pain and misery. You, if, you, if somebody stands on your toe, you feel the pain. If somebody pulls your hair, you feel the pain. If somebody pulls your finger, you feel the pain. It's very difficult to give pleasure to your foot. Somebody stands on it, you feel the pain very quickly. So it's easy to experience pain in this body. It's not very easy to get pleasure. We are trying to get pleasure from the body. We try to find happiness in the body. but. You can never get real happiness. You get the illusion of happiness, the maya sukh, not the real happiness, which is anand. Ananda is the nature of the soul. We have to come to the spiritual platform to experience real pleasure. So in this verse today, Lord Krishna is telling to Arjuna that everything which is done for the pleasure of the Supreme, it becomes Brahman. Just like here in this temple, this microphone is Brahman because it's being used in the service of Lord Krishna. And the drum, the Mridanga drum and the cartels the instruments which we use for kirtan, they are spiritual because we use them for the service of Lord Krishna. We never place them on the floor. You can see Mridanga is kept off the floor. The kartals are kept off the floor. 
the books are kept off the floor because they're spiritual, because they're meant for the service of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. And to place them on the floor, that's where our feet are. We're walking on the floor. So it's not good. So we always keep them off the floor. Hmm. We have to understand what is actually Brahman. You see, Brahman means spirit. So everything which is used in the service of the Supreme is spirit. The incense which we burn is spiritual because the incense is offered to the deities. And the bell which we ring is also spiritual. The flowers which we offer are spiritual because they're being used for the pleasure of the Lord and His devotees. They're not material. So matter can be made into spirit by the devotee. We use it for the service of Lord Krishna. But if we use the matter for our own senses, then it becomes maya. If we think the material world is for our enjoyment, that will bring us problems. And most, that is why mo almost everybody in the world, this world, this material world, we're suffering, we're having problems, so many problems. Even though you may come to Switzerland and we think, oh, Switzerland's a very wealthy country, I'll be happy here. But you don't find happiness just by changing your location, just by going to another country, doesn't make you happy. Wherever we go, we take our karma with us. And the nature of our karma will decide how much enjoyment we will get and how much suffering we will get. So if, we're, if we remain engaged in material activities, then we're under the law of karma. But karma is not eternal. Karma can also be destroyed. In order to destroy your karma, you have to take up devotional activities. You have to take up the process of bhakti yoga. You have to chant the holy names of the Lord. You have to chant on the, on the, get some japa beats and every day do japa meditation, chanting the maha mantra on the beats. You have to avoid karma. We get karma when we eat food which is not offered to the Lord. If you eat non-vegetarian food, then you get a lot of karma. If you eat food like meat, fish and eggs, there's karma there. And even if you eat vegetables and fruit, there's karma there if you don't offer to the Lord. So we have to understand Everything is the property of the Lord. It, before we can enjoy it, we must first of all respect, respect his proprietorship. And we do that by offering, just like here in the temple, you can see here on, on top of the donation box is a, a box of fruit. And these fruits have all been offered to the deity. So they're all prasad. So this prasad is there for you. You can take some prasad for yourself. Because they're offered to Krishna, they're free of karma. The devotees who eat prasadam, they have a karma-free diet. They don't get any karma. But if you eat non-vegetarian food, if you go in some restaurant, meat-eating restaurant, you get a lot of karma. There's a lot of karma in food. You have to know how to avoid the karma. 
the devotees know they will offer the food to Lord Krishna. And by offering the food to Krishna, then there's no more karma. And when we eat food which is free of karma, then we become purified. We get great benefit by eating food which is without karma. But if you eat food which is not offered to the Lord, then you get more contamination. We become polluted. We're already polluted. We're here in the material world. We have contamination. We want to purify ourselves. The more we purify ourselves, the more we will get free of our suffering in this material world. Everyone is suffering. And from the highest planet down to the lowest. The highest planet in the universe means the planet of Lord Brahma down to the lowest planet, at the bottom of the universe, the hellish planets are there. Yamaraj, the god of death, he has his planets there at the bottom of the universe. And if we are sinful, we go there. We go to Yamalok and we have to see Yamaraj. They say this is one temple everybody has to go to. <laughs> Everyone has to go and see Yamaraj. So, we, if, if you are surrendered to Lord Krishna, then you can avoid going to Yamalok. We have to take shelter of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is the, per, the master of Yamaraj. Just like Lord Krishna, he, he went to Ujjain, he went to Avantipur to get teachings from his guru. Lord Krishna was sent by his parents, Devaki and Vasudev. They sent Lord Krishna along with his brother Balaram. They sent them both to the Gurukula to get education. And they studied there for six, 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 64 days. And in 64 days, they studied all the different arts. They learned everything. So after they studied everything, then Sandipani Muni requested them that I've taught you everything. He said, now you should give me Guru Dakshin. So they said, yes, Guru Dev, what can we give you? So he said, I want you to bring back my son. My son died earlier. So I want you to go and bring him back. So Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, they went to look for him. They heard he had died in the sea. So they went to the ocean first of all. There was a demon there, but they did not find the body of their guru. So then they went to see Yamaraj. They went to Yamalok. And Yamaraj was very happy when he saw Krishna and Balaram. He came and he bowed to them and he asked them, how can I serve you? What service could I do for you? Because Yamaraj, he knows Lord Krishna is the Supreme Lord. Yamaraj is also one of the Mahajans. And so when Lord Krishna comes there, he's happy to get service. Usually only the sinful people come to Yamalok. But Lord Krishna also goes sometimes when he wants something. And he told Yamaraj, he said, the son of my guru is here. Please bring him to me. And so Sandipani Muni knew. He said, yes, the son of your guru is here, Sandipani Muni's son. And he brought the boy and gave to Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna brought the boy, took him back to the guru, gave him to the guru. So the boy had died by his karma, but by the mercy, special mercy of Lord Krishna, he was taken from Yamalok and brought back to his home to be with his father. So karma is not eternal. Karma can be changed. How to change karma? Yasvendra, yasvendra loka matavendra ahosva karma bandhana rupa palabhajanam apanoti karmani nirdahati kintu chabakti bhajam 
Govindamadipursam tamaham bhajamin. Lord Brahma tells us how karma can be changed. He said that every living entity is suffering from karma. He said from the highest living entity, Lord Brahma, down to the lowest, the tiniest germ, which bears the name the Indra Gopa. He said they're all suffering their karma. We have our karma. Our bodies are our karma. Our body is our karma kshetra, our field of karma given to us according to our karma. So, Lord Brahma said, every living entity is suffering for kar from karma, but those who have surrendered to Govinda, then all of their karma is destroyed because they have taken shelter, they have surrendered to the lotus feet of Lord Govinda. So all their karma is removed. So karma is not eternal, karma is temporary. But when we have karma, we, ha we have karma because it's a suffering, because it's so much trouble. To get rid of karma, we have to surrender to Krishna. And how to surrender to Krishna? We have to chant the holy name. We have to read the Bhagavad Gita. We have to avoid sinful activities. Sinful activities mean things like meat, fish and egg. When you eat or cook or buy these foods, then you get karma. You may not eat, but if you cook for other people, you still get the karma. And if you give money to buy that, you get karma. So meat, fish and eggs is sinful. Intoxication is also sinful. If you're taking intoxication, that means alcohol and drugs, these diff even, you, even tea and coffee, Coca-Cola, they have caffeine. Caffeine is also a stimulant. It's a drug. And they're not good for our mind and senses. We want to avoid these things. They give us karma. And then, Illicit connection with the opposite sex, associating with the opposite sex just for sense enjoyment, that is also sinful. And then gambling is also sinful. Gambling simply increases our material desires and brings us karma. It's like so many people like to go to casino. They go to casino. Nobody ever wins. Everybody loses. So many people go, uh, they are always thinking, I will win, I will win. Everybody loses. They try to cheat, but they get caught. <laughs> there was this one man in Hong Kong. He was a big businessman. So people from Hong Kong, they go to this place called Macau. There's a big casino there. And they go and gamble there. So this big businessman, he got caught, he had a fake note, he used a fake bank note. <laughs> he got caught, got in trouble. So like that, people go, they try to cheat. They try to make... So gambling makes people untruthful. So these things all have to be avoided. Intoxication, gambling, meat eating and illicit sex, these things bring us karma. And karma keeps us in the material world, causes us to take another body. And another body means again birth, again old age, again disease, again death. These things are not very pleasant. Birth was not pleasant wasn't pleasant for the mother, it wasn't pleasant for the child. And growing up is also a lot of trouble. Bringing up children takes so much patience, takes so much time, so much energy to bring up children. People have to tolerate so much. It's all suffering 
from the birth to death, <laughs> all suffering. So Prahlad Maharaj says, we have, to we have to surrender, we have to take shelter of the Lord. And how to do that? You have to engage in devotional service, beginning with chanting the holy name and reading Bhagavad Gita. You must read the Bhagavad Gita. Srila Prabhupada said every day you should read one chapter of Bhagavad Gita. There are many people, they read a chapter a day. You know, just read the verses, you can just read the verses. You don't have to read all the purports. But it's a good way to get to know the Gita. If you read a chapter a day after you've done it, six or seven, you start to know the Gita. You start to know it better. Certainly it's a good habit. We need to, this is all sadhana, reading scriptures, reading verses, reciting verses. We need to do that. Sadhana is helping us to purify our mind and consciousness. The more we chant and read the Bhagavad Gita, the more we do Sankirtan, the more we purify our consciousness. So when we purify our consciousness, means we become on the spiritual platform and we can associate with Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is eternally blissful and we can also become blissful like Krishna the more we associate with Him. Okay, any question? Anyone has any question? Yes Prabhu? In the beginning of actually you talked about uh, uh, yajna. In, in the past, in the past, uh, Brahmana had qualification to make yajna. Uh, they chanted properly mantras, and uh, they also tested. They uh, killed. I, I don't remember. Uh, please correct me. Uh, they killed uh, or put cow, old cow, to fire and uh, chanted mantra, and from fire. Uh, this young young cow uh, exit. Yeah. So, uh, what uh, should we uh, need to have uh, qualification to make uh, sankirtana yagya? What qualification uh, we need, and what what is the test? Well, tanada pisuni chena, tarara pisa hishnana, amani na maladena, kirtaniya sadai. That is the qualification to make sankirtan yagya. We have to be tolerant, like a tree. We have to be without false ego. We have to have ego in proportion to the soul. Or we should think of ourselves lower than the blade of grass. We should offer all respect to others and we should not expect any respect for ourselves then you can chant the holy name constantly. Kirtaniya Sadahari. You can chant constantly when we have these qualifications. That is a pure yagya. Yagya means for the pleasure of the Lord. So we do the yagya for His pleasure. Right? For His pleasure we are chanting the holy name. For His pleasure we're going out and distributing books. We're trying to please Lord Krishna. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself came to teach everyone to do Sankirtan. He was doing Sankirtan. So he's showing us how important the Sankirtan Yagna is. And if the, Lord, if the Lord Himself comes and He's doing Sankirtan, then certainly it's very important. And wherever He went, He was doing Sankirtan. From His birth, the Sankirtan was going on. And so Sankirtan is very important, but we want to, as you said, pure Sankirtan, we want to do it in Krishna consciousness. 
for the pleasure of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So we say Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtan. All glories to the Shri Krishna Sankirtan. The Sankirtan Yagya is very ideal for this Kali Yuga because people are so unfortunate in the Kali Yuga. They don't have any wealth to perform an expensive yagya. They don't have any patience to sit for a long time. They're not very pure. They can't follow rules and regulations. So just let them chant the holy name. Join in the yagya. And there's no restriction. Everyone can join, young men, old men, women and children. Everyone can take part in the Sankirtan Yagya and be benefited. And it doesn't cost them any money, so that's very important in the Kali Yuga. People are so poor, they're so miserly, that even if they have wealth, they will not spend it for Krishna. So let everybody chant the holy name. Let them take up Krishna consciousness. So this, this is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, that he is giving the holy name for everyone. Even the untouchable people who cannot get into the temple, who are born outside the Vedic culture, like ourselves, you know, we can all get the opportunity to join in the Sankirtan Yagya. We cannot go into the temple like Jagannath Puri or Shakshi Gopal, but we can do Sankirtan. We can chant the holy name. That is the real Yagya. Okay, yes? Uh, and, uh, can you uh, explain please how, uh, how often Shri Prabhupada songs uh, bhajans? Because we have a lot of uh, Vaishnava bhajans and uh, so how, how is it important for us to uh, pray, praise this song? Well, Srila Prabhupada said in the song book, he said, I have not introduced these bhajan. He said, this is done by my disciple. He did not introduce us to singing all these bhajans. He said, this is done by my disciple. And so he said, chanting Hare Krishna is important. The bhajans, he did not oppose it when the, when the sannyasi started to introduce singing bhajans. He, Prabhupada did not oppose it. He let it go on. And he, you know, he wrote the introduction to the songbook, but uh, he said that I have not introduced this. This has been introduced by my disciple. And he said we have to know the meaning of the bhajans. He said if you don't know the meaning, then there's no benefit to these bhajans. So Prabhupada gave purports to all these diff many different bhajans. Prabhupada liked to sing bhajans. One time he told, he told one devotee, he said, this is how I keep myself busy. He said, when there, when nobody's, when there are no guests, and so, he said, when I'm not having massage, and he said, when I'm not writing, then I would do bhajan. I would sing, play, he liked to play harmonium, could play also very good madanga. He liked to do bhajan, and that's why there's so many recordings of Prabhupada. <laughs> doing bhajans. So, chanting Hare Krishna is what is important. But bhajans can, it can help people, it can give some people some, some taste for chanting, for singing, for doing, for the pleasure of Krishna, singing for the, the deities. Different songs, like some of the songs are the names of Krishna, like Vibhavarishesha and Namkirtan, 
Yashoda Mati Nandan, like these songs are this, just made up of the names of Krishna coming from Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And then some songs are for the morning, we sing Udilaruna and some songs in the month of Damodar we sing Damodar Astikam and then during uh, when it's um, every every three years what what they call it uh, Purushottam Mas yeah Purushottam Mas that time you're supposed to sing Chorastikam the song about Krishna being the, the thief you know by Bhuva Mango Thakur usually so. So some of these songs meant for different t appropriate times. You see in Vrindavan we sing a Vibhivari Shesha every morning in the temple because at the Samadhi we're singing Guru Vasikam. So you're going to go in the temple again, go in the temple to Krishna, but no need to sing Guru Vasikam again because we just sang it to the Samadhi, at proper Samadhi. So when they go in the temple, they sing Vibhavari Shesha. With, uh, that was the advice of Narayan Maharaj, suggested they could do. But in the times of uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, in his temple, in the Godimat temple, they would sing bhajans quite a bit. If you go, like I've heard in Bangladesh, in Bangladesh, all these songs of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, people, you know, the Vaishnavas there, they know all these songs. Because they're all in Bengali language, so it's their language, so they can understand them all very easy. So they know like Naratam Das Thakur songs and Bhaktivinoda Thakur songs, they will know all these songs, they can sing them all. That way they keep their mind absorbed thinking of Krishna because they sing the songs, they know the meaning of the songs. Often we're singing the song, we don't know meaning. <laughs> yeah, we should know. If you know the meaning, then there's more benefit. Then there's benefit. If you don't know the meaning, you don't get it. Yes? You have a question? What's this question, Prabhu? He says that there is 400,000 fewer uh, forms of life and there is four principles. And he asked how this uh, species like humans progressing, if for example like a body gen, they cannot follow the principles, how they do the progress? How does who, who progress? Aborigines. Well, maybe you can go there and give them mercy. <laughs> you go and preach to them. They're waiting for the mercy of devotees. Maybe you'd like to go there and preach to them. Then they can progress. They need the mercy of a devotee. Right? Is 
9,000 are what? Alive? Civilized. Well, I never heard this before. I don't know where you got that from. Did you hear it before? I never heard it. Before. What I mentioned, I, I don't remember the proper amount, but what I mentioned is that is. He said what? Okay, some amount of them. But, but I know fa there's no figure of 9,000. Some amount of them are civilized. That we agree to that. Hare Krishna. <laughs> yeah, we agree that not everyone is civilized. Some amount of them not civilized. Okay. Okay, Hare Krishna. Shil Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Shil Prabhupad ki jai. It's all in this part ki na jinas nirsingha maharaj ki jai. Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Shil Prabhupad ki jai.